The RK2023 is a surprisingly excellent handheld from Palkiri that ships with an open source chip, the RK3566, and a community created firmware called Jealous. As a result, the stock experience on the RK2023 is a very, very good one. However, there's always room for improvement, optimization, and reinterpretation, which is where ArcOS comes in. And in this video, you're going to learn what ArcOS is, why I recommend it over the stock firmware, and of course, how to install it. Let's get to it. Hello and welcome to RetroBreeze! ArcOS is a custom firmware that has been around for many years, and available for many different devices. Most notably for me is the Powkitty RGB10, which is a device I still use it on today. And actually this is still my absolute favourite device for playing Game Boy Advance games. Anyway, ArcOS is designed to be easy to use, highly customizable, with great performance and the ability to update it online through the OS itself. Thanks to its long development time and multitude of supported devices, ArcOS is a tested, very stable, and fully featured OS. ArcOS is based on Linux and uses the emulation station frontend. This means that the basic user experience and the way you interact with the OS is more or less the same as it is on the stock Jealous experience. However, you get a huge amount of settings customization for the OS, emulators, and even individual game settings too. Honestly, there are an absolute ton of advantages to using ArcOS. Too many to list in this video. So be sure to go ahead and check out the wiki which is linked in the description box for a full list of its features. One of my favourite things about ArcOS is that it has very, very optimised defaults, which I find to be much better than Jealous. With ArcOS, I have had substantially better default performance on Dreamcast and N64, with absolutely no tinkering on my end. Everything looks great, runs great, and it's just overall a better experience than it was on Jealous. So of course, I recommend ArcOS over the stock Jealous wholeheartedly. And if you're convinced, stay tuned because now I'm going to show you how to install it, whilst also retaining the stock games and BIOS files that came with your device. Before you begin, make sure that your RK2023 is charged sufficiently. I don't recommend having a charge cable plugged in while you do this process, because I have noticed it can cause some weirdness whenever the device is meant to reboot. I recommend you have at least 60% battery before you begin just to be safe. And now we have to have the talk. You know, the one about SD cards. The SD cards included with devices like this are incredibly low quality and will fail quickly. To ensure that you don't encounter any issues or data loss in the near future, I highly, highly recommend you replace the SD cards with high quality cards from Samsung or SanDisk. You can, if you really, really want to, use the included cards for this process, but I absolutely do not recommend it. And if you have any issues installing ArcOS or with any step of this process, and you're using a stock card, your very very first troubleshooting step should be to replace that SD card with a reliable one. Trust me, get a high quality card and save yourself some heartache. Another benefit to using a high quality card is that they often boot and load ROMs faster than the stock cards as well. Just go ahead and do it, trust me. Anyway, to begin with, we need to take a look at the included SD cards. Depending on where you bought your RK2023, and the options that you chose at checkout, you'll either have one or two included SD cards. The left-hand slot, TFOS, is the slot that the RK2023 will boot from, which means the SD card in this slot has to have the operating system installed to it. The secondary slot is called TF Game, and can be used exclusively for your game collection and BIOS files. The next steps you should take depend on whether you have a secondary SD card or not, and also whether you actually want to keep the games that came with the SD card or not. If you don't care about keeping the included games that came with your SD card, you can just skip to the installation section using the timestamps. If you do want to keep your games in BIOS, then follow these next steps. If you only have one TFOS SD card, insert it into your PC. This card is typically split into two partitions, Jealous and Storage. Now if you do just have one single SD card for the OS and it also has games on it, and your PC is running Windows, then I'm afraid I have a little bit of bad news. When I tried to do this with my stock SD card, I found that I wasn't able to access the partition that had the games in the Windows File Explorer. There was a lengthy workaround to this, 
which ended up bricking my mini PC temporarily, so I'm not even going to go into that. But really, your only options in this case are to either use a Linux or a Mac PC to get those ROMs off, or just lose them and build your own collection. Which, to be honest, is probably the best thing to do anyway. Still, pop your SD card into the PC, and if you're able to access the partition that has your ROMs, just find the folder called ROMs, and copy that to your desktop to back it up. On the other hand, if your RK2023 came with two SD cards, just insert the second TF Game SD card into your PC instead. You should find the same folder structure with all your games and the BIOS inside. Create a new folder on your PC and copy all of this content over to it. We'll be copying this content over to the new SD card later on. Now it's time to download ArcOS and install it to the SD card. Browse to the ArcOS wiki on GitHub using the link in the description box below, then click download links on the sidebar. Find RK2023 and use either the G drive or the mega link to download the archive. This will download a .xz file. Inside that is a .image file. You need to extract this using a software such as 7-zip. You can download 7-zip from 7-zip.org, install it, and then use that program to extract the .image file from within the archive. Now we need to copy this image over to our new SD card. First, insert the new OS SD card into your PC. It's recommended to use an SD card of at least 8 gigabytes, but 16 gigs or higher is recommended. Of course, you might want more if you want to put your games on it and you're only going to use this one SD card. But bear in mind there's no upper limit here, so if you want to go 512 or 1 terabyte, you're probably going to be fine. Depending on what operating system is on your PC, this process is going to be a little bit different. If you scroll up the GitHub page, you'll find an instructions for loading section with the instructions for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'll walk you through the Windows instructions in this video, but do let me know if you'd be interested in a Mac or Linux tutorial as well. First, download the USB image tool using the link in the description or on the wiki page. Extract the contents of the zip file, and then click the USB image tool.exe file to open it. Your SD card will be displayed on the left hand side. Go ahead and click on it, but make sure that you have the right card inserted and the right card selected. Click restore on the bottom left. Select the ArcOS image we just downloaded, and confirm when prompted. If you get an error here, for example that access is denied, try reinserting the SD card and trying it again. This happened to me just once, but reinserting the card fixed it. This will take a few minutes to complete, so just relax until it's done. Windows might give you a pop-up at this point that your SD card needs to be formatted. Just ignore it, get rid of the message, and then remove the SD card from your PC. Reinsert the card into your RK2023 and power it on. Now just leave the device alone. Don't touch it or get scared of all the craziness going on on screen, you just need to leave it. Don't press any buttons, just let it do its thing. In fact, while you wait, why not leave a like on this video and subscribe to RetroBreeze for more great content like this. I would greatly appreciate it. Anyway, once it's done, your device will reboot into the emulation station interface. ArcOS has now been installed. And if you're sticking to just one SD card, power off the device and reinsert the SD card into your PC. This time there will be three partitions now. And the only one you ever need to touch is the Easy ROMs partition. If for some reason you're going into the other partitions, you're probably doing something wrong. So just stick to Easy ROMs. When you open it up, you'll notice that this folder structure is the same as the one that we backed up earlier. So just go ahead and copy all those folders you backed up onto this SD card. When you're prompted to overwrite and merge folders and files, just agree to do so. Once again, reboot the RK2023 with the SD card inserted and your games should appear. And your BIOS will automatically be detected and used as well. On the other hand, if you do want to use the second SD card in the TF game slot, which I do recommend, insert that second card into your PC now. First make sure it's formatted to the NTFS file system. To do this on Windows, right click the SD card in the file browser, then click Format. Select NTFS from the drop down, make sure that Quick Format is checked, and then click Format, and just agree to the warning that pops up. When that's done, copy over all of those ROMs folders that you backed up earlier over to this new SD card. You want all of the folders of the systems themselves including the BIOS folder, not just the single folder called ROMs. It doesn't matter if these ROMs came from the original OS SD card or the original secondary games SD card, it's the same thing. Just copy the files over and wait for it to complete. Then reinsert your card into the RK2023 and power it on. When it comes up you'll notice that none of your games are displayed, but that's okay. In this ArcOS menu, scroll down until you find Options. Then go to Advanced. Scroll down to the very bottom of the list, and you'll find an option called Switch to SD2 for ROMs. Go ahead and select that. Wait for a few moments until you'll return to the ArcOS menu, and your games will now be displayed and can be played. And that's actually it for this tutorial. You've now installed ArcOS, 
and also any games and BIOS that you had before. Now let's take a quick look through ArcOS. This will be pretty brief, but do let me know in the comments if you have any further questions, and I'll do my best to answer them. In the ArcOS menu, you can press Start to bring up the main menu. Go into Display Settings and Info to adjust the brightness and display properties. In UI Settings, you can change the theme and how your game list looks. You can go into Emulator Settings to change which emulators and cores are used for which system. And you can go into Quit to restart or shut down your device. After you've connected to Wi-Fi, you can also use the Scraper menu here to download box art and other media for your game collection. In the menu, you can go and find Options. Scroll to the bottom to find Wi-Fi. And you can use this menu to connect to Wi-Fi. Just bear in mind that if you have the original RK2023 like I do, you're going to need a dongle to make it work. There is a new version coming out that has Wi-Fi built in though, and that should work fine. You can go to Update to update ArcOS to the latest version. And you can go into Advanced Settings to back up your settings, which will be saved to the SD card, or you can restore default settings if you mess something up. Inside the Tools section, you'll find Ports Master for downloading ports, and Theme Master for downloading new themes. When you're in-game, Select is your hotkey button. Hold Select and press X to open the RetroArch menu. Pressing Select and R1 saves the state, Select and L1 loads the state. Pressing Select and B resets the current game, and pressing Select and Start twice will quit the game and return you to the ArcOS menu. If you want to change or set up your own hotkeys, from the main menu open up RetroArch. Then go into Input, then Hotkeys, and set up any keys that you want in there. Back out to the main RetroArch menu when you're done and select Configuration File, then Save Current Configuration. The hotkeys that you set up will now be available in any RetroArch-based emulator, which is most of them. Finally, the last tip I have for you here is that if you want to use the HDMI out, you'll need to power off the device, then plug in an HDMI cable, and then power it on again for it to work properly. And that covers it for this one. Let me know if you have any further questions about ArcOS. And if you like this video, please do leave a like on it. It helps me out a lot and also helps my tutorials reach more people. Also, please consider subscribing to RetroBreeze for more content and tutorials just like this. This has been Shem from RetroBreeze, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon.